Hey! Hi! Hello! How are you? I hope you're doing well. You look good. You look healthy. You know. You look like you've been keeping up. Uh, it's episode 166 of Atomic Radio Hour. I'm your host, Vince. Uh, I'm feeling good. I'm feeling full. My my place smells of bacon. My my belly is full. Uh, I've been hydrated. I have more here. Again, not wine. Um, I hope you're okay. I hope you're well. I don't have a ton of like news. I don't have a ton of intro stuff to talk about. I've been trying to read a little more. I'm trying to cook a little more. I made some sauce. I made fresh pasta over the weekend. I hope you're okay. I hope you're well. Um, still trying to hear from Papa, from Kyle. Uh, when we had him a little while ago, I, I, I've tried to put out some feelers. I've tried to, I know a guy who knows a guy who knows a guy who knows it, who owns a truck. And that guy has carrier pigeons, uh, that's kind of going all over like the neo Vietnam occupied area right now. And I've been trying to get carrier pigeons out to Kyle, just quick, brief little messages. And I haven't gotten anything back. I know he's okay. I know he's safe. Um, but you know, I've been on a, I've been on a multiplayer kind of kick lately. Um, I think that's what I've been missing from games. Cause I, I feel like frequently on here, I've said how much I feel like I've fallen out of love with games that aren't the fallout series. And I, and I feel like, uh, what I've needed really is multiplayer. And I, and I think maybe that's what the, I think that's what games should all aspire to be. I don't think every game should be a multiplayer game, but I think every game should, should, I think games should fall into two categories. Do you want a really good single player experience or do you want a really good multiplayer experience? And I, and I, I, maybe this is like redundant and stupid of me to say, but I feel like if I was making a game, that's the kind of directions I would go into. I'd go one of two ways. Do we want to make a great single player or do we want to make a great multiplayer experience i've been playing um a little bit of halo uh i recently beat the first one it's just about the same as i remember if you do play it uh play with skulls on but watch what skulls you put on (laughs) because uh when i played it we had on the skull that made all of the massive objects by half and then all the explosions bigger so we couldn't beat the final level can i spoil halo one it's like over 20 years old. I, I think I can. You're getting off the ship. The explosions make it 10 times harder. Uh, and then they get to a point where like grunts have fuel rod cannons. It's not It's not fun with the... with the. Um... Oh, and I'm on Legendary. But if that's what I'm... The, the, sorry. Tangent. Whatever. I, I've been playing Psychonauts 2 and Halo like at the same time. And they're both very different experiences. And there's rumors now that uh, as of the recording of this, I record on Wednesdays, I edit on Thursdays, depending on when this comes out, well, no, when this comes out, because this comes out on a Saturday, this will be after there has been an announcement by Sony about the next God of War, and I loved God of War. Kyle and I loved the 2016, 2017, I think it's 2016, God of War so much 20, whatever, that we made a Kyle and Vince Likes. There's a link somewhere on screen to Kyle and Vince Likes. Listen to that if you want to hear Kyle and I talk about things we like. Ha ha, look at me go, shamelessly plugging. Ha ha ha. Um, but there's a rumor going around that the next God of War game is going to be like 40 hours long. That's great. Super happy to hear that. Too long. I'm just at a point where like games are way too long and they, I don't feel like they're respecting, they're respective of my time. Um, I could be wrong when I say this, but I'm pretty sure God of War had a new game plus. And if that means I got to play the game and then play it again after new game plus to get all the good stuff, like I don't have 80 hours to dedicate to a game. I need like a 20 hour experience. Even I love, I think The Last of Us 2 is one of the greatest games ever made. And it's too long. Like, you could have taken out, like, two or three hours out of the game, and I think it would have been just just at the edge of the perfect length. And I love that game. And I love every moment of that game. But that's a game that takes 28 to 32 hours to beat. And that's a lot. And, again, like, I don't want to sound like I'm complaining because I'm not complaining. It's just it's a lot right then and there. And people have jobs and or kids and or kids with jobs, something 
But, uh, yeah, I've been really enjoying playing multiplayer again. Play SWAT. If you've never played SWAT, play SWAT. Because SWAT rips. So, uh, speaking of games that I'm playing and with people and nostalgia, I don't know if you guys grew up in an era with Blue's Clues or not. Uh, I think Blue's Clues is like a year older than me because I think this is the 25th anniversary from all the stuff I've been seeing. But Steve, the OG, uh, has been, has been like in Blue's Clues off and on for a while now. Like he just makes like these cameo appearances. And once when I was back home on the East, um, I was flipping through channels, looking at things, and I saw that like Blue's Clues was on. And I watched it. I'm not ashamed to admit it. It's a show that, like, I knew that, like, was continuously played. I just, you know, sometimes you want to check in and be like, oh, wow, here's the mail. And like, you want to, like, you want to remember what it's like to be a little boy, a little girl, a little person. And the one time I click on the episode, it's the reboot. It's the new series. I think the guy's name is Jake or Josh or something. Um, and Steve shows up and Joe shows up. And I cried the whole time. I cried the whole episode. The entire thing. And I'm not even entirely sure why. But I bawled. Like a little baby bitch. The whole time. Like, Steve shows up and the notebook isn't a notebook anymore. It's a smartphone. And, like, they're still taking clues on it. But, like, Steve is a detective. Which means he never stopped looking for clues. Like, it's just... It's so nice to see, like, this tightly wrapped little, like bow this package this thing of like what you used to love as a child and my first ringtone ever ever before i had ringtones for like other people because i I mean again i don't know how old everyone is who's listening or watching but like there's a point in time where you had ringtones for everybody your best friend your sister your brother your mother your father your aunt your uncle your niece your nephew everybody you knew had a separate ringtone And if you knew somebody that had a default ringtone, you hated that person. Like, I had a buddy who played guitar, kind of, and loved the Halo games, and his his ringtone, and he never called me. We we didn't hang out. We were just, like, friends that kind of talked on Xbox, kind of. Uh, He had a ringtone on my phone that was the heavy metal version of the Halo 3 menu music. That shit, or whatever that is, whatever the soundtrack, whatever. Like, you had one for everybody. The first ringtone I ever had, ever, before, uh, before any personal ringtones for anybody was mail time for whenever I got a text. And it's way too long. And it made me smile every time I heard it. And it upset everybody after the third time. But recently on Twitter, I saw it. It's probably going around a bunch of other places. But on Twitter... They had Steve come back and, like, say, hey, I'm sorry for leaving. And even though I'm gone, I never forgot about you. And I know you never forgot about me, but look. And he makes references to, like, the show in cute little ways. Like, and I'm sitting there at work watching this on Twitter crying. Just me. My big-ass self, bald head, big beard, just sitting there crying. Just not giving a gosh damn. And what, what killed me wasn't, like... When he's like, we'd go hang out with Mr. Salt and we'd freak out about the mail. Wasn't that. It wasn't the part where he was like, you take all these things and then and you, you do. Wasn't that. It was when at the end he said thank you in sign language. And I can't tell you how many times I have thought to myself when saying thank you in sign language. I've thought to myself, good thing I've watched Blue's Clues growing up. If you haven't seen it, I might put a clip or I might put a picture of Steve from Blue's Clues somewhere on screen. Um, Joe looks great. I remember not liking Joe because Steve left and Joe took over. I was also way too old to be watching, uh, Blue's Clues when that happened. <laughs> but like, I remember being like, I don't want to, I don't want to ever see this man Joe on my television set. And I was like, I was at least 11 by the time I like was seeing it more, uh, recurrently because that's when my brother was born. I was 11. So 11, 11 plus one, 13. I remember like being very angry at Joe. But again, it's like, you know, that was my guy. Steve was my guy. He was the one I knew. If you haven't seen it, you grew up with it, you have to watch it. I think you just have to watch at least the clip of Steve saying he's sorry for leaving. But like, there's even a point where he's like, you look good. Whatever you're doing, it's great. Keep it going. I don't know. It made me smile. It made me happy. It made me laugh. It made me happy. Before we get into the lore, before we get into everything I got to do, um, I was doing a little research on the lore. 
And my, uh, my mom used to always tell me that if we didn't move... Really, dude? My mom would always tell me that if we didn't move, uh, if we didn't stay in New York when I was growing up, my mom wanted to move to Henderson, uh, Nevada. And that's, she, that's where she wanted to go. And I'm doing today's lore. And the piece of lore, and not to spoil anything, but the piece of lore that it's on, uh, I'm reading the thing and it brings up Henderson, Nevada on the wiki. So... And this is this is the whole point I'm trying to make with this is how weird life is and a weird full circle thing. Um, I'm cl- I click on Henderson and it's just I believe it's like the Robco factory is there. It's not it's not really anything. Uh, but I like call my mama, but I'm like, hey, what part of Nevada did you say you wanted to move to? And she says Henderson, and I'm like, no friggin' way. And I and I said I'm I'm doing something. It's in relation. I'm doing something for the show. It's in relation to the Hoover Dam and I want to go and I'm so close. I'm only X amount of hours away. It's like a day drive if all I do is drive and this and that. And my mom just without like missing a beat goes, oh, you were at the Hoover Dam. Like the f*** you mean I was at the Hoover Dam? And she's like, yeah, you were there. You were like 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 months old and you were feeding popcorn to giant catfish and i was just sitting there thinking to myself is that like a sign that like everything is connected that because of this and i mean i'm not saying because i went to the hoover dam and i don't remember it i liked the fallout series but i'm saying like it's weird how like shit happens and like how shit is all connected and how i've been playing new vegas off and on since it came out the first game i ever went to a midnight release for and i didn't even know that i had technically been to the the space where the main conflict takes place. I would have been telling that story all the time. Like I tell the story about me in DC. It was just, I don't know. It was something that I thought was interesting. Something I thought was neat. I thought something you, that you guys would appreciate. All right, I think I've rambled and gone on and on enough. I think it's time for uh, us to get into the lore. But before we get into the lore, much like always, we have to start with the Patreon. Uh, because of you guys, I can continue to do this. I actually have been trying to talk to my podcast hosting people and they are finally starting to somewhat get back to me. Um, they have integrated with our old site and now we're using a new thing and it's just kind of a mess and all over the place, but I'm going to have to pay soon. Uh, and that was normally Olive's department and now I have to figure that out on my own. So thank you for helping us out. Uh, the following people that I'm about to thank are very much appreciated, very much loved. And because of you guys, I can continue to do this and continue to make the show bigger and better. And I've got these ideas and whatnot. And like I said last episode, um, I can do these things and I can try them out and get weird and maybe buy a nicer camera and whatever. So first, from the top, we have to thank the OG Noah. Thank you, Noah. Then we have to thank Danny. Thank you, Danny. After Danny, it's Marcus. Thank you, Marcus. And after... Marcus, we have to thank Bones Jones. Thank you, Bones Jones. Again, guys, thank you for all the support you've given. Um, I, I will continue to make this and make something and try to go bigger and better as I can through your support. So again, thank you, Patreon members. Before I get into the lore, I know I normally do that and then I do, um, uh, I do, what do you call it? Uh, but I forgot to bring this up last week. Uh, just a minor update real quick. I feel like this might have to go without saying, but Tabletop's not coming back. Um, I know there were people here that really, really liked Atomic Tabletop. I really, really liked Atomic Tabletop. But now that Olive's no longer part of the show, that's not going to be a show that happens um, right now. I don't want to say ever, like, <laughs> because... I don't know how to run it, but if I knew how to run it, I would try to run my own game with my friends and whatnot and try to make something of it. But I don't know the mechanics. She built that game off of 5e, Dungeons and Dragons 5e, and then kind of retrofitted it and like retooled it and reworked it. I think she was on the fourth or fifth uh, reworking of it. And it was kind of this ongoing thing that, that she was working on. But we do have one last episode recorded. Um... It's been over a year since we've recorded at this point. Uh, she just didn't want to work on it. She, uh, she, there was a whole thing with it that she lost it and then she got it back and she had to restart the edit. 
and I don't know what her editing process is. Everybody's editing process is different. For me, it's very streamlined, very just go, get it done. Um, but I like to take I like to take a lot of the um, audio stuff first and and fix that and then kind of go in and do the audio with the video. From what I understand, she was doing kind of everything at once, so it kind of seemed like a lot. If I can get my hands on those files, even if I can just get my hands on the audio files from her, I'd be more than happy to put it out as kind of like the, the farewell, the goodbye. We we kind of ended on a, on a good note. It was kind of like, um, I believe the term is a bottle episode. Because uh, it's kind of all in one room. It's kind of like resolving some things and going further and onward and whatnot. But um, that's not coming back as of right now. If I if I had people to play with and time and X and Y and Z, then maybe I can get it back. But yeah, I just uh, I, I wanted to make sure I said that. So again... I'm sorry about that. Um, Kyle and I will try to, we can try to work something. I know Kyle is never opposed to playing more Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> um, so that being said, let's move on to the lore. Now, I usually ask a question for the lore. And that question is always a pick a number or a color, a country, a, a, a food. Oh, I think I might do types of pasta next. I've already done that. Okay, see? Um, I've already done types of pasta. I wanted to do types of cars, but then I know, like, all over the world, there's a bunch of different cars that never see, that are never seen in America. But today's question, this is the first time this has happened. Um, the first, uh, the question I asked was, I'm thinking of a Nintendo console. And I'll be honest, I pick one quick. I pick one simple because I knew I didn't have a lot of time, uh, I've got a lot going on right now, and I totally forgot what day it was, and um, someone got it. Someone in the Discord got it, but they never got back to me. Uh, I, I messaged them. I was like, hey, I need the lore, and they are like, all right, I'm, I'll be home soon, and, and I'll hit you with it, and uh, I never got it from them. Actually, you know what? While I'm here, let me just te- check the Discord, and while I'm recording, <laughs> and while I'm recording, they've gotten back to me. You know who you are. Hi. Save that one, though, because if you win another one, you'll get it next. But uh, that being said, I went and I picked because I hadn't heard back. It was getting late and I knew I had to record. And I just started jotting down because I thought, you know what? Even if I if I jot one down, I can save it. I can take the pages out and I could put them somewhere in my room and or even on the shelf behind me. And I thought, all right, I'll grab these when the time comes. But since I didn't hear anything, I did one that I've always kind of wanted to know more about. Um, I didn't, I didn't look up the, the battle itself, uh, but we're going to New Vegas. We're doing Boulder City. So the city itself. I learned a little bit about like US history through doing it. But if you'd like to hear any lore, make sure you're in the Discord. Uh, Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday, because I record on Wednesdays, I will ask a question on one of those three days. First person to get the question right gets to pick lore for the week. And this week's lore is on Boulder City. Now, in 1930, the town was erected to house the workers that were there building the Boulder Dam. Now, I know what you're thinking. What the hell is the Boulder Dam? Because that's exactly what I was thinking. Now, let me let me get the exact Wikipedia article up. So this, I get all of my Fallout lore off of fallout.fandom.com, but I get all of my Hoover Dam lore on the actual place at en.wikipedia.org slash wiki slash Hoover Dam. Um, and this is the first, this is like the first paragraph of the Hoover Dam. We will do, I will do a, a lore segment on just the Hoover Dam from Fallout. But the Hoover Dam is a concrete arch gravity dam in the Black Canyon of, Co- of the Colorado River on the border between the United States states the U.S. states, the, so the United States states, that I've never thought about it like that, between the two U.S. states of Nevada and Arizona. It was constructed between 1931 and 1936 during the Great Depression. It was dedicated on September 30th, 1935, to President Franklin D. Roosevelt. Its construction was the result of a massive effort involving thousands of workers and cost over 100 lives. It is referred to as the Hoover Dam after President Herbert Hoover 
in bills passed by Congress during its during its construction, but was named Boulder Dam by the Roosevelt administration. The Hoover Dam name was restored by Congress in 1947. So, it was originally called the Boulder Dam. So there you go. There's a little U.S. history for you. Uh, it was built to this town, the town of Boulder City, which is a real town, was built to sustain 5,000 working people. In 1931, it was formally founded, the town, and work began on the dam. It was a publicly owned city by the Bureau of Reclamation and Six Companies Incorporated. Now, if I remember correctly, Six Companies is a real company, and the Bureau of Reclamation is a real-ass government agency, the USBR. That has 5,000 employees. Its annual budget is $1.17 billion. Uh, its commissioner and deputy commissioner are currently vacant positions and it was built and it was started in 1904. Sorry, 1902. I've never heard of this. And that's because it only, it's, it's, I've never lived in a state that uses the Bureau of Reclamation until this year. It's pretty much the Great Plains and West. So that the whatever's Texas and North and then West. Good. Great. Fine. It's the Department of Interior's like subset. Cool. I live in a weird ass country. It had a strict ban on alcohol due to, to prohibition of the time, and visitors needed a special pass just to get in. It was very like a very tightly locked down city. By 2077, Boulder City survived the Great War almost untouched. And in 2277, at the first Battle of Hoover Dam, uh, it was pretty much a sleepy town. The citizens of Boulder City had left, and the town was packed with explosives as a trap for Caesar's Legion. Chief Hanlon lured them in, and the town crumbled because of the explosion. And it cut the Legion forces off all the way back across the Colorado River. Now, I looked up where the Hoover Dam is, where Boulder City is. And where the strip is. There's a picture on screen of what I took off of Google Maps. Because, like I said, Boulder City's a real place. Um, the thing that I didn't understand is... It looks like the Legion had already crossed Hoover Dam at that point. So, which which makes sense and doesn't make sense. Because they would have crossed it. Uh, I know that, that Caesar wanted Vegas to... as his, uh, He wanted Vegas and that the Hoover Dam was his own Rubicon... But I always thought that he was going to take the dam itself as well. I don't think he would just squander it and walk away. That's what I would think at least. So this would imply that his forces had gotten over the dam. They got into the city and it cut them off and pushed them back. And I believe, I don't know if it says it in the screenshot that I took because I did it ahead of time because I used my noodle. Uh, I think it says it's like eight or nine miles. So eight or nine miles of legionaries just cut off because from Boulder City to Vegas is 35 miles, if I remember correctly. It might be in the picture, might not be. When I was doing my research, I believe that's what I read. So there's not, there's not a lot of room when you think of the grand scheme of like the map of Nevada. New Mexico, but like there is a lot of space and like 35 miles. What's 35 miles when, when nobody's driven a car in almost 200 years, except for in Fallout 2, you technically do have a car. You know what I mean? Don't yell at me. There's a Boulder City uh, Memorial to pay homage to all of the NCR that were lost in the battle. And I'm going to read a little more on that later because there's something that I've never actually done. I've only ever seen YouTube videos about with a gentleman who goes by the name of Kowalski. Everything in the city outside of the Boulder City train station, the concrete mixing yard, and the Bighorn Saloon was destroyed once the dynamite, the TNT, the explosives were detonated. This became, Boulder City became a source of concrete for the NCR, and they used this concrete to reinforce their troops that went all up and down the Colorado River. Limestone was shipped in from Quarry Junction. I'm pretty sure if you try to cut through Vegas the fast way, not only do you pass the Cazadors, you pass Quarry Junction. So there's a check. Yeah, because I did it when I streamed NCR Chuck. We wanted to get right there, and I got stuck with near Quarry Junction with the Death Claws. Okay, you've played New Vegas, hopefully, because uh, you're listening to this. 
The death claws at Quarry Junction have kind of put the kibosh on sending the limestone from Quarry Junction to Boulder City. Um, but I think that's a super neat thing to have concrete production to have concrete production in a post nuclear war type of setting. There's a lot of industry in New Vegas that I feel like kind of goes understated that is, is, is very advanced. I don't know how I feel about it exactly. Cause I do like the desolate feeling, but the fact that there's a working dam and concrete facilities and there's a guy whose like entire job is to make art for Howard Hughes. I feel like a lot of that is super understated in New Vegas. I feel like it's underrated. Even I don't, f- I don't feel like I hear people talking about that. So all of this town collapsing around itself has made a man named Ike, the owner and the sole resident in the town. And he just hangs out. I think I've been in the Bighorn Saloon once. And I think I did it on stream. Uh, when I did NCR Chuck, I'm going to link to NCR Chuck. It should be a little tag somewhere in the top corner. Jimmy Johnson. Uh, but that's all I have written for my notes. There's a couple things I'd like to read off of the wiki itself. It's it's involved in a couple a couple quests. Boulder City Showdown, Ring-a-Ding-Ding. They went that away. Defacing the Humble Stone, which I'm assuming is what I'm about to talk about next. Uh, as an unmarked quest, but there's also an unmarked quest called We Must Stop Meeting Like This 3, and I had no clue this was a quest, and it's about how you run into Victor constantly, and I just really like the name of that. So there's a note here, and I want to know, leave a comment on whatever platform you listen or watch on, because I want to know if anybody else has done this. This is on the wiki, it says, notes, if the player character attacks the memorial with any weapon, it will cause Kowalski to confront them. The only way to avoid violence or N- NCR infamy is to pass a speech check of 30 or flee and then wait 73 hours. By then, Kowalski will have returned to New California. On the other hand, the player character can say, you're a little bitch and your brother was so too. Your brother was too. Immediately initiating combat with both Kowalski and any of the NCR members nearby. Let's click on Kowalski quick, because I'm never going to talk about him ever again. Oh, wow. He has he has a surprising amount of lore on the wiki. Uh, I'm just going to read Kowalski's background. I might even put a picture. I might even, I'm probably going to put a picture of Kowalski on here. An enlisted soldier in the ranks of the New California Republic Army, normally stationed at Camp McCarran, Private Kowalski has recently received leave and plans to head home to see his family in California with a caravan, going through the 188 trading post. During a layover at the post, he decided to make his way to Boulder City to pay his respects to his older brother, Donald, at the Boulder City Memorial. His brother sacrificed himself so that the rest of his unit could evacuate some of the wounded during the terminal stages of the first battle of Hoover Dam. That's about it. Defacing the Humble Stone is his little unmarked side quest, little John. Yeah. There should be a picture on screen of the sign for Boulder City. And it says the city's motto is Home of the Eagles, seen on the Boulder City train station sign, mirrors the mascot motto of the real world Boulder City High School. That's really cool. I wonder what it's like to play these games, like play New Vegas and live in this area. Because like like I've like I've said numerous times, I've been to DC, I've been in the train station, and I felt like I was there. I wonder what that's like. I need to go here. I need to go to the Hoover Dam. I need to go to Vegas. I think I need to buy a suit. I think I need to buy a, a checkered suit. <laughs> if I go, can I read? Let's let's read before we get out of here, before I end lore, let's read the memorial. Um, there's a picture of it. I know I have a picture of it, so you might be able to read along with me. It says, On this spot in the year 2277, rangers and soldiers of the New California Republic turned back the forces of Caesar's Legion during the Battle of Hoover Dam. Over 100 men and women gave their lives on Nevada soil to defend local civilians and the principles of the Republic. May this humble stone be an enduring memorial to their valor and sacrifice. And it has the California, the New California Republic bear and another bear with one star. And I, the only bear I know with one star is the bear logo, the NCR logo from, uh, Fallout 2. Cool. I think that's just about everything. 
I think that's lore. So, hey guys. Hi. Old man Vince here. Uncle Vince, if you want. Um, I've, I've said kind of publicly on here how much I don't like indie games. And I don't think it's that I don't like indie games. It's that I don't want to pay $40 for an eight-hour experience. But I have a Series X. And I have Game Pass. And I've been downloading indie games quite a bit. And I really, really enjoy them so far. Uh, I played a little bit of Cluster Truck last night. Psychonauts is con- I'm considering it an indie game, even though it's it started indie, then got bought out. So I'm considering it indie. Um, but I already had a I already had a little bit of a love for it going into it. Anyway, I downloaded a bunch of games last night. Uh, Papa recommended me like Charion, Karen. It's like a it's like the thing in reverse. He explained it to me as um, Cluster Truck. I already said. There's a game where you're just a cloud and you rain on people's day and ruin it. That sounds like a game that's right up my alley. If you guys have any indie games that you really, really love that isn't Cuphead, because I really, really love Cuphead, but I don't feel like breaking this controller, recommend them. Actually, just recommend any game that you're playing right now, because I'm kind of in a weird mood where I want to play more things. I want to stream things, but that's a whole the whole conversation for another day, because I always say, oh, I'm going to start streaming, and then I stream for a week or two weeks or three weeks, then I stop. I do have plans to fix that. Uh, let's just say sometime next month, hopefully, hopefully, if I do everything right, um, I can kind of get back into the swing of things. But let me know. I want to try Maneater. Um, what's that Owl Boy game? Is it called Owl Boy? <laughs> I think, it, yeah. <laughs> I think it's just called Owl Boy, um, <laughs> where you just kind of fly around and uh, like grab people. I don't think there's like any combat, but like you can grab people that can like shoot. Uh, what are they called? Leave it to Beaver, uh, Dennis the Menace, uh, Bart Simpson, slingshots. Thank you. Uh, like one of those. Like I think it's one of those kind of games where you just kind of pick somebody up and they're like pew pew from across the map for you. Celeste is on there. I don't feel like ripping my teeth out. For Celeste, that's my only thing is like I know Celeste is like a notoriously – it's – I heard it's like Super Meat Boy but dumbed down. But I don't mean dumbed down in like a story way or a bad way but dumbed down in the difficulty department. Oh, there's also – that made me happy because I'm a s- slut for a female protagonist on Game Pass. There's a little option that said woman protagonist, which I thought was a little – I wouldn't use, I, I don't know, it's just seemed, woman, like demeaning, like woman protagonist. I would say female or femme, femme protag, some shit like that. Some dumb shit like that that I would say. But uh, yeah, let me know what you're playing. Let me know what you're playing. Let me know what uh, you want to play. Let me know what you want to see from the show too. Like I feel like I'm going to keep saying this, but I, I'm in this weird purgatory space where it's me. <laughs> Where for the month I didn't know what I was doing and now I'm kind of here and I'm kind of rocking and or rolling, trying to do the best that I can and trying to figure it out. It's a whole, like I've said last week, it's a whole new format I got to learn, but I want to know what, what, I want to know what you guys like. Like leave a comment. Tell me what you like. Tell me what you're playing. Tell me what bands you're listening to. I feel like, I feel like I need to go through like a band kick where I can say like, this is my favorite band because I don't really have bands. I like artists. Like, I like the rap people. <laughs> and I've been listening to a lot of stuff from like the 60s and the 70s. Little stylistics. The the dialects? No. A song called Hey Mr. Love. I can't remember who that's by. I'm awful with band names. I'm awful with song names. But still. Let me know what's going on. I'd like to know. And I think with that, I'm just going to end it. Again, I'm sorry for these shorter episodes. Um... They're going about 45-ish minutes, but I don't have another person to take up 20 minutes. <laughs> so we're here. I want to get back to playing games. Maybe next time we have Kyle on, we can do a hypothetical. Um, maybe we can do just a, a podcast type game. I'll have to think of something or write something or do something, but I'll have something. Just thank you for being patient with me. Thank you for uh, understanding. Uh You know, I'm appreciative of you for listening. I think it's wild that anybody anywhere listens to me. That being said, if you like our intro music, if you like the intro music, it's by Shane Ivers. It's called Feather Duster. You can get it at silvermansounds.com slash free music, where not only is there... 
Feather Duster, there is a plethora of other great, great tunes. Just, just they absolutely slap. If you'd like to follow me, there's links to my Twitter in the description below. There's also links to the show. You can find us anywhere you can download a podcast. Thank you again to the Redbubble. I'm sorry. Thank you again to the to the Patreon. We also have a Redbubble where you can buy stickers, clocks, blocks, duvets, and whatnot of designs that myself and Olive have designed. Um, if you're watching on YouTube, leave a comment. Again, please tell me what you're watching, what you're listening to, what you're playing. I would like some recs, some recommendations. So let me know what movies you're watching. I want to watch movies. I want to read books. That's what... Recommend me some books. Some good fiction. Preferably with pirates. Or some sci-fi from the 70s. Something like just... What do you like? What do you listen to? Who are you? What is your name? <laughs> like, uh, let me know. Let me know. I'm saying it like I'm actually like... You know, whatever. Let me know. I hope you're doing well. I hope you're smiling. I hope you're safe. I hope you're happy. I hope that you call somebody that you love and you tell them that you love them. Uh, and I think that's this week's episode. This has been episode 166. I've been your host, Vince. Tip your waitress. Be safe, everybody. Bye. Atomic Radio Hour Podcast. A Gulman Entertainment Production.